Hey, how's it going guys? Mythical Misfortune here and starting today going into 2018 that name is officially changing to Valiant Style. Now the reason why I wanted to switch to the Valiant Style is because it might sound corny but it also sounded cool to me in that no matter what misfortune befalls me I want to give it my best effort and valiantly try my best to overcome it. Now for the actual reason why I kind of got tired of mis Mythical Misfortune because it just sounds sad and depressing. So, Valiant Style will now be my new name, forevermore, until the end of time, YouTube-wise. Now, today I wanted to bring you something a little bit different than what I usually do. I know I say that <clears throat> almost with every video because it almost just seems like I'm putting out feelers and like every different type of anime video you could do, couldn't do, but this one hits a little bit closer to home for me only because of what it is which is a what-if scenario for my favorite series of all time Dragon Ball now I know there's like plenty of like people that do this fan fiction wise Masako X from Team Four Star does a lot of what-if weeks doing what-if scenarios along those lines and well all of them well let me take that back well, I can't take back something I haven't even said, but a good portion of them are actually really, really good. Some of them you can agree with, some of them are like, how can that happen, and just a lot of other things. So what I wanted to do in my own way is do a what-if scenario while explaining why I believe these would happen, while giving you a bit of reference points of where I got some of these things. So in the description below, I'll put in like deviant art, uh, fan fiction section for, uh, Dragon Ball as well as Dragon Ball Multiverse which is where some of my ideas came from as well as uh, a link to Masako X's playlist uh, what if Raditz turned good for this specific scenario <clears throat> which is what if all the Saiyans of the Saiyan Saga survived and joined the Z Fighters so that means both Raditz and Nappa lived along with Vegeta to join the Z Fighters what would happen so, we're first going to start off from the very end of the Raditz arc, where Goku has Raditz in the full Nelson, Piccolo's got the special beam cannon ready, but we're going to take from the Xenoverse 1 version of events, in which basically Raditz musters up just enough energy to get out of the full, uh, full, full Nelson and basically dodge and Goku dies to the special beam cannon. Now, in this regard, Piccolo would be shocked, but also more so worried. So it would be a mixture of fear, because he still has to take time to regrow his other arm. Because we do know he can do that, but he doesn't know how much time he would have if Raditz is going to do anything. Raditz himself would also be in, in awe at the fact that there, uh, that such attack could and would have killed him. And also, the attack that he took from Gohan is hurting a lot more than what in the original series as he, when he dodges, he coughs up a little bit of blood. So, Gohan hit him incredibly hard. So, thinking of the best way to get out of this situation for himself, Raditz would then throw down a blast and run away. Using the smoke screen to get a, to fly off to as far away from the area as possible while going into a nearby cave to try and recover for the time being. As this is happening, the Bulma and the gang coming in from the ship would see the smoke screen and have to wonder what's going on, what happened with the fight, and sadly see that Goku has died. Talking about how the Dragon Balls can revive him, they just need to gather them and wait. Piccolo would then take Gohan and train him just as in the original series, but this time instead of worrying about Vegeta and Nappa because Raditz didn't die, he would, they wouldn't know about Vegeta and Nappa yet, but Piccolo would take Gohan to train for Raditz just in case Raditz ever came back or came back even stronger himself. So in this regard, the main reason why a lot of these plot points happen is because Raditz is a very cautious, cunning, and very, what's the word I'm looking for? He's the type of person that looks for survival first over anything. Preservation of self. 
and it's seen in a lot of instances in just a short amount of time that we're with Raditz in basically him pleading for his life from his own brother when he, Goku has his tail from um, not initially killing Goku when he first meets him because you can sit here and say that you know Raditz was evil and he was just a bad guy when he first showed up but to an extent it actually shows a little bit more to Raditz's character himself that he did not immediately kill Goku and even then he didn't do anything that would immediately kill Goku during their fight with Piccolo. Now, the only thing you, only real other thing you see is that he does cut off Piccolo's arm, but he doesn't do anything to that regard to his own brother. So it shows a bit of restraint in in that character development to see Raditz do all this while still being cunning and trying to preserve himself while understanding his current situation. While he is a proud Saiyan warrior, he preferred to live. So, no, Raditz having his knowledge of Saiyan biology, and yes, I'll get stronger just because of the fact this, I, I, I could have died. So, having that in his back pocket, he's already plotting his revenge and, wait, and getting ready to report to Vegeta and Nappa. While Piccolo, being the cautious person that he is, would take Gohan, especially considering the fact that him bearing witness to that latent power of Gohan. That is a power that they could possibly use on Raditz and I'd actually give Piccolo a little bit more credit because even though this is something that we see later on in the series we do see that Piccolo has the the rationale or I guess logic you would call it in possibly thinking well Raditz came here from space what if he has friends what if he believes that he can't beat us on his own and he calls for backup so Piccolo would probably be training Gohan a little bit harder in this scenario of events compared to the original series because of this. Getting back on to Raditz, Raditz would be sitting in the cave, hurting, grabbing at his stomach, wondering how a small Saiyan child could have such strength. No Saiyan child on planet Vegeta ever had such strength before. Perplexed and puzzled about what mysteries his brother and his family could possibly have, he then decides to report to Vegeta and Nappa about his current situation and the possible plot for revenge against the war Z warriors, and telling them that Kakarot is dead, but not by his hand. Vegeta would, as in Moscow X's version of events, berate Raditz. Not only is your brother useless in taking over a planet, but he did. Nobody's dead. You couldn't kill your own brother. You had to run away. What kind of Saiyan warrior are you? You're a disgrace to the Saiyan race as a whole. Do not show your face in front of me or Nappa ever again unless you want to sign your death warrant. More likely it'll probably be unless you have a death wish, but I digress as far as that is. Raditz would then be begging and pleading with Vegeta not to be this way. Knowing that Vegeta and Nappa are both stronger than him, he would also want to make sure that he had his own place with the last remaining people of his race. Raditz isn't exactly the most noble of people, but he is somebody that un understands camaraderie as well as pride within one's race, similar to Vegeta, but probably to a lesser extent. And to basically be outcasted for losing a fight and now be on a remote planet where you know nothing of what's going on, the ecosystem, what you can eat, how you can survive, it would make Raditz feel very depressed and, um, and angry too. So in that regard, once the communications were cut off, before Raditz could continue on, Raditz would then slowly start to figure out a way to how, what's the best way for him to survive? How can he do this? Well, one of the best ways he can do it and possibly get revenge on now Vegeta and Nappa and the Z fighters is to have them fight each other. So Nappa would then devise, I mean, excuse me, Raditz would then devise a way to approach the Z fighters more than, uh, most likely Piccolo and Gohan since those are the ones he knows in searching for them and telling them about Nappa and Vegeta are headed to the planet because they would decide to come to the planet for disgracing the Saiyan race through defeating Raditz but basically to come there to destroy the planet and defeat them. So Raditz would tell them about that plan while also plotting that if I can get these two to take each other out, whoever the remaining one is, I'll take them out and I'm the overall winner. It would take 
probably about a nice three to four days for Redis to fully recover because to an extent I do believe there's a good healing factor within the Saiyan race depending on the injuries so the injuries that Raditz sustained are bad and he would still probably be hurting but he would at least be able to recover enough to where he could be into a fight again after about a three to four days but during these three to four days something would happen to Raditz Raditz would actually run into a family of bears in this cave who don't know what to do with Raditz but know that he's not somebody to mess with in backing away. Raditz would just simply laugh and look at them as, hmm, I could probably make food out of these creatures. And then to his left, a dinosaur would show up, one of the bigger ones that looks like a weird Tyrannosaurus Rex. And Raditz would simply look at it and blast it away, uh, slightly blast it away. Now worried about what will happen, he has to now change locations but doesn't want to fly away too far just in case the Piccolo and Gohan are there because he's still recovering. So he'd probably find another cave that's within that mountain that he's currently in and hide it in. And to his surprise, the, uh, the mother bear would actually show up. And what does she have? A slab of meat. She would bring it to Radis and then walk away. Radis would see this as possibly a small gesture of him just like dumb animals. So Raditz wouldn't think too much of it, but it would actually be a nice difference, a nice change of pace to start seeing the, a way for Raditz to, to change. And then once he is fully recovered, the dinosaur then tries to come back and Raditz just simply punches the crap out of it in the head. And it falls down dead. Looking at it, Raditz would then do what he wanted to do, take a little bit of extra food for himself, and leave some for the bears, and bears would be extremely happy. And in, and in Raditz's mind, it's just like, you just basically got what I couldn't take with me. But it just, it kind of goes to that character development that we would see. And then as he's searching for Piccolo and Gohan, this too would probably take some time, as we still see Gohan's development as per normal in the original story online. And dodging... Raditz along pick with uh, Piccolo looking at Raditz and dodging him not knowing how much stronger he could be or exactly how strong he is in comparison to him and then on the night where Gohan grew back his tail and became the great o uh, I was about to say the great Ozaru God I feel horrible about that it's still such a bad movie anyways Uh, Raditz would also be looking at the same moon, thusly turning Raditz into a great ape as well. Thusly, we get our great ape fight, but Raditz being the experienced Saiyan that he is and having more control over the form would easily best go on as well as tearing off his tail. And then from there, you would get Piccolo destroying the moon, helping go on to survive this ordeal against Raditz, and then Raditz would simply shrink down along with, along with Gohan, not being that far away from Piccolo and Gohan. Piccolo would try to grab Gohan and run away, but Raditz would be able to stop him and was like, wait, I have something to tell you. Piccolo, being a little bit cautious, still keeps up in the uh, sky and listens to Raditz as he says, two other Saiyans are coming here to destroy the Earth, along with me. Piccolo, intrigued by the situation, wonders, wonders why two other Saiyans are coming here to kill him, but not only that, he kind of figures, He's a little bit more calm about the situation because he's already planned for this in his head. So, in figuring this out, he looks to it and says, Well, you need you. need I'm pretty sure you want to live, so let's help each other out in exchanging and helping each other. To an extent. Probably not those exact words, but going from there, you would have a small conversation with Raditz between Raditz, Gohan, and Piccolo the next day. And basically, Raditz would tell him about Vegeta and Nappa and what exactly they plan on doing and why they're coming while Piccolo would then basically say we're training and getting stronger Gohan's actually stronger than when you last saw him He's automatically intrigued by this Raditz would automatically ask to train with them and then Piccolo's 
honestly knowing how much stronger Raditz is, it would help out the training for the upcoming Sans to make them stronger as well. So he'd more than likely welcome it. Of course, the additive, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And then from there, Raditz would then go into asking about how his brother did not take over the world like he was basically sent to Earth to do. And Piccolo was like, Goku was never like that. Goku was always, in, well, Gohan, excuse me, would, uh, would say that my father was never like that, according to my mom. My dad was this great fighter who just fought and helped everybody, but yet defeated all these great fighters. And here are the exploits of Goku, basically, from Dragon Ball. And Piccolo, and Gohan would also mention that he even beat Piccolo. Piccolo Reluctant would also mention that how great and honorable a fighter Goku was as well. Raditz would be filled with a new sense of pride, a new sense of, you know, I kind of feel bad that I got, I killed my brother, because now he may have not taken over the world like we wanted, or like we usually do, but he was still a great fighter, an honorable one too at that, and he would openly say that he apologizes for killing Goku. After hearing this, Piccolo would then explain that they do plan to bring Goku back to life through using the Dragon Balls. And because Raditz still has his scouter on, even though it's low on power, Raditz would then basically accidentally be leaking information to Vegeta and Nappa as they are on their way to Earth. And as on their way to Earth, they overhear this conversation about the Dragon Balls, giving them another purpose in wanting to use the Dragon Balls. Or giving them another purpose coming to Earth in using the Dragon Balls. As everybody else gears up and gets ready for this grand fight, we move on into the Saiyan arc. Vegeta and Nappa, the Cybermen versus the Z Warriors, including Raditz now. Everybody's completed their training per normal in the original anime line, or storyline, excuse me, except for Piccolo, Gohan, and Raditz, who are actually exceptionally stronger in this version of events. But we're going to stop right there before we move on into the Saiyan arc. Let me know what you thought about this so far, guys, in the comments below. And if you didn't like anything, if you didn't like my over-explaining, just keep me in the know, let me know. For right now, at least, I'm going to try and keep doing this. The first three parts of this will probably go through uh, the Namek arc. And then from there, I'll probably look more into your guys' suggestions and how I should do this video and everything. But... Again, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and hey, we'll probably do some voting too for some very big events. They probably won't be coming until around the Boo Saga, but I'll be thinking about it as we go on. As always guys, until next time, I'll see you next time.